Hey guys, my name's Larry Maurer and I'm here to give a talk on barefoot running. It's going to be a little different than most of the talks I've seen in that this is a practical talk about helping you make decisions about what you should do with your barefoot running or if you're a physician or a physical therapist, what you should tell your patients. Let's get started. So who am I? I'm a, a podiatrist, a foot doctor. I work in Kirkland, Washington. I'm a longtime runner and I practice foot and ankle sports medicine. So I see runners and football players and soccer players and athletes all day. I've been studying barefoot running for a little over 10 years. Why is barefoot running so popular? That's a great question. Because as I said, I've been studying it for 10 years. Nobody really wanted to talk about barefoot running five years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago. It was just us foot guys uh, discussing theory and and being really excited about the mechanics of the foot and ankle and, and, uh, and taking that perspective on it. Now, everybody wants to talk about barefoot running. All day in my office, barefoot running, barefoot running, barefoot running. Everybody wants to talk about it. Why is it so popular? A couple reasons. Uh, number one, the book, Born to Run by Chris McDougall. Great book. I really liked the book. Uh, I liked it despite the fact that they vilified podiatrists a, a little bit. Uh, but, but it's made barefoot running really big. He's done a great job of marketing the book. It was on the New York Times bestseller list. Spectacular book, but it's made barefoot running uh, a popular concept. The next thing that made it uh, popular was the marketing effort of Vibram. They came out with a five-finger shoe. So they're marketing the minimalist concept. Uh, everybody should run more barefoot. Wear our shoes with, with toes. So, so that's driving it. Um, it's also important to know that the barefoot running is, is popular because at its base it's true and, and I think the truth rings. The fact is barefoot is best and in, in general we, we find that, that the less intervention we have from, uh, from companies or individuals in terms of mechanics and the human body the better, right? As we monkey around with things we usually screw something up. So in general the concept rings true and 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 for uh, a specific population it is true why is it best for you and it's best for you for a bunch of reasons number one it builds arch musculature right that's a big one with the physical therapist I talk to they want you to build your arch musculature they want you to make a better arch being barefoot should build arch musculature shoe weight changes biomechanics that's another another thing that's true and it's been validated in study after study after study the more you put on the bottom of your foot the more weight at the long at the end of that long pendulum the more your mechanics change the angle your ankle knee and hip take when they hit the ground are different when you put a shoe on so the more weight the worse you should try and minimize that weight uh, the lateral heel counter on the shoe so on this shoe this is called the lateral heel counter for anybody who's watching this who may not be a shoe guy or a foot guy. On the outside of the shoe, it's called the lateral heel counter. And when your foot comes in and lands, if that's outside of where your heel would normally land, it's going to change the mechanics of your foot. In specifics, it, it whips it to the inside. It's called a pronatory whip. And that makes a big difference in your, in your shoe strike or your foot strike. So that's another reason shoes are not great for you, right? Uh, the upper of the shoe, the part that goes over your toes, interferes with normal toe spread. So in general, we want our toes to spread out like an Aikido athlete, where when they hit the ground, they dissipate the force properly. That toe spread really makes a big difference. So you don't want a shoe that interferes with, with toe spread, and, and truthfully, most do. The other reason is, is more practical. Dark, moist environments breed toe fungus. If you're over 70, chances are good you're groaning right now because you have toe fungus in this country. It's an epidemic. It's huge. I don't want to talk a lot about toe fungus, but that's another reason barefoot is best because the sun is, is a fungicidal or antifungal. It kills toe fungus, and if our feet were out to the sun, then we wouldn't have so much toe fungus. Uh, the last reason that I want to go over today is that the sole of the shoe all that soft, cushy stuff, which you literally go into the shoe store looking for and, and feel good when you put them on, you go, ah, oh, that feels good, that soft, cushy sole. It, it, it interferes with your body's ability to sense the impact as you hit the ground, right? It desensitizes your foot. It shields you from the, the truth. And, and, and some people theorize, and I believe this, that it changes the way you run. You run differently in shoes than you, you would without shoes because you can't tell that you're slamming your foot into the ground in, in an awkward way. So. Those are all great reasons 
that you shouldn't wear shoes, right? Barefoot's best. Other more theoretical reasons. The anatomy is perfect. Our anatomy is perfect. We're all born perfect and we're born with everything we need. And that's a great concept and it's very validating and it makes us feel good, right? Uh, uh, something that, that I, I agree with and that I, I depend on as a physician is that the body takes care of itself. It's going to do the right thing. If if something's going in the wrong direction, it's because we're doing the wrong thing. We're overthinking. We're overtreating. Typically, the body does the right thing for itself in the big picture. Uh, I am not concerned about the skin. People don't like barefoot running, or people say, I don't want to barefoot running because my feet are so sensitive. I am very confident that your skin would toughen up if I, if I took away all your shoes and didn't let you run with shoes or walk around with shoes. Skin would toughen up. Not a problem. That's the least of my worries. So, barefoot is best. Another argument is that injury rates have never improved with fancy shoes, orthotics, all these fancy things, all these uh, anti-pronation gel packs, blah, 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 have never improved injury rates, right? That's a, that's a big argument, and there's a, a, a bit of truth to that. It's cheaper if you're cheap, uh, and, and everybody is, including me. Uh, you don't want to spend 150 bucks on a pair of shoes, and bare feet are free, right? That's a big argument. Feet are beautiful, they should be out, they should function well, and, and they, they are, and it's an amazing functioning uh, piece of mechanics. It's unbelievable, and, and that's the reason to use them right. So, let's take a closer look at, at some of those statements, because all of them are true to some degree. The first one, this is fun for me because I like, to, uh, I like to play the too cool for school card just like everybody else does. Injury rates have not increased. Recently, and what, by recently I mean 2007, and I haven't found anything any more recent, I just did this uh, search. But 2007, British Journal of Sports Medicine found through a meta-analysis, and a meta-analysis, if, if some of you aren't uh, researchers, is an analysis of the studies. So they took 1,113 studies and they analyzed them to find out the true answer. They first put them through kind of a, a quality test and they eliminated all the studies that were worth, worth nothing, garbage studies that were done poorly or didn't meet their standards. After they did that, they had 17 studies left. And, and that'll tell you something right there. You can't just read a study, read the conclusion and be done. So the vast majority, I mean 1,113 down to 17, were thrown out the window. So those 17 studies were analyzed. Of those 17 studies, they found that when they put all the data together, that today injury rates in runners were somewhere between 20 and 79 percent. Okay? So we know exactly what the injury rates are today, somewhere between 20 and 79 percent. If you compare that to the last time a big study was done that people respected and people listened to, uh, the incidence of injuries was between 19.4 and 92.4%. Okay? So, if you look at that, and if you look at the conclusion of, of the 2007 study, you'd realize that injury rates haven't changed. They're somewhere between uh, about 20 and 80%, 20 and 90%, and they have been forever. Right? And that's the conclusion that they came up with in the study. And that's why everybody says, hey, shoe companies, you haven't changed injury rates. If you use some common sense, and we're going to apply common sense to medical literature, which is bad form, but we're going to do it anyway. If you use some common sense, the real conclusion that you have to come up with here is that the last study that was done, we didn't know what injury rates were. This study in 2007, we still don't know what injury rates were. What researcher worth his salt is going to say, I am really confident that you're going to injure yourself between 20 and 90% of the time. How is that helpful? When I'm sitting in a room with a runner, if I tell them, hey, we're going to do this surgery, and it works out great between 20 and 90% of the time, what does that mean? That's, that's, it's complete garbage, right? So the fact is we didn't know what injury rates were back then. We don't know what they are now. We can't say they haven't changed. I read both those studies, and I read the studies that they were based on. They're all garbage. Okay, some of the, uh, and I see runners every day, but some of, the, some of the hypotheses and some of the findings and some of the, the numbers they did and the way they did the studies, you can't do it. It's too complicated a, a subject to tackle in the first place, and that's the real answer. So don't listen to that when they say that injury rates haven't changed. 